All right, so probably the biggest question that we get is how to shoot better. And we find that we're ending up talking about m minute parts of the shooting cycle. How to work the trigger, how to hold the gun. And there's really not always a one simple answer. You gotta do a bunch of stuff yeah. together, right? Yeah. So we thought we would just do a complete overview on how to shoot a pistol. So we're gonna look at how to shoot a Glock, which is gonna cover most of your plastic. Striker fire. Striker fire, right. right. Single action guns like that. Mm -hmm. We're gonna look at the double action. We got a Beretta out here today. And then we're gonna look at a revolver too. What we want this video to be for you guys is a way as you're progressing in your shooting to look back so you can self-analyze. If you're having problems, you can look, am I holding it right? Am I looking at things right? Am I loading, unloading correctly? Am I being safe? We want this to kind of be a go-to for you on how to. Here we go. Let's do it. In regards to shooting, of utmost importance is safety. None of this stuff matters if you can't do it safely, because as soon as you shoot yourself or somebody else, the fun's over. So you need to understand the safety rules. Know your target and what's beyond. That's very true on the street. If you're involved in a defensive scenario and you are only focused on the threat, you might be putting rounds right through a bad guy into a busload of children for all you know. So you must always know what's beyond the backstop or target. You must also always know the direction of your muzzle. Sang likes to talk about the trigger discipline, which is huge. For us, if you can't control this, you've got to think about your finger. Is it in there? Is it not in there? Keep practicing. For us, this is one of the most important things for us. If you're not going to fire and your finger's in the trigger, if, like you're about to go up and holster and your finger's in there, you've got to think about it. Keep dry firing and practicing at home. Which means you need to focus on what you're doing. This is something that you see often, especially now in the Instagram, YouTube world. Everybody wants to go faster and do more and be better. This is how accidents happen. If you cannot get these things in at a subconscious level, hit the brakes and, and start working on them. Know your backstop, know what's beyond it. Know the muzzle direction that is of paramount importance because you can have a negligent or accidental discharge. And if the muzzle's in a safe direction, you're not gonna have an issue. Keep your finger off of the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And then the last one that's always important is keeping the gun unloaded until ready to shoot. In the context of concealed carry or carrying for duty use, we're going to be having you carry a loaded firearm. So you need to be able to work safely, which is why that trigger finger and muzzle direction are so important. Here we go. All right, so shooting a gun. Probably the most important part and often misunderstood part is the interface between that gun in your hands, the human to weapon interface, we like to call it. And it doesn't need to be anything hard. Really, you've got a machine in your hand that wants to jump out of your hand, so to speak, and you need to hold on to it. Sang's gonna demonstrate on a CERT, which is modeled after a gun that starts with a G, on how to properly hold the pistol. So, one of the things you're gonna notice when he grabs it with his strong hand or main hand is he is up tight into the beaver tail. There's no room there. If he's got room, the gun wants to do this when it, when it recoils and when the gun cycles. Up high like that, not only is he getting a good firm high hold that's going to control that flipping recoil, it's also going to help the gun operate easier. A semi-automatic gun needs a fo solid foundation here for that si slide to reciprocate smoothly. In addition to the grip being up high and tight on the beaver tail and up high and tight to the trigger guard, we also want to make sure that we are aligning the muzzle correctly. We don't want that gun to be too far into our thumb, like so, or too far towards our fingers, like so. We want to get that right in the middle of the web of our hand. Not only is that going to allow us to be able to utilize our thumbs proper, or our fingers properly, but it's also going to allow us to align that bore so that the recoil impulse is traversing straight back through our upper body. Here, you see that we are using the standard isosceles stance. This was kind of pioneered by the Ipsic shooters back in the day. This is not anything new, but this is something that has been fine-tuned over many hours of competition shooting. The bore is coming straight back to his eye. The pistol is in the web of his strong hand. This is very important. When you build this grip, that eventually is going to you're going to find a sweet spot and your gun's going to just know where it's supposed to be. So what's he going to do with his other hand? That's where things get important. Notice how he's up high and tight here. There's no room anywhere in here. The more friction and contact you can make with the gun, the better you can control it. Here's where a lot of people screw up. Sang's not trying to mash the gun like he's squeezing a banana to death. 
he's pushing in with his palms. That's where a lot of strength is coming from because you can use your chest, you can use all of these muscles to help squeeze in on the gun versus just trying to manipulate it with hand strength. So when you bring your other hand up there, here's one thing folks often mistake. Show us the uh, old cup and tea saucer business here. Not only has he lost contact here with all of this area where we can gain some good friction, he's now lost the ability to get up tight here, which is another contact point. So if you slide it back up where you're supposed to, do you guys see visually what's happening here? He has just enveloped that whole gun. Now, saying has got pretty good sized man hands. If you've got smaller hands, it's not gonna be as easy, which makes it even more important. The smaller your hands and the less strength you have, the more cognizant you need to be of this. If you guys go to any shooting video of any of the great national world champions, you'll see every one of them's got their meat hooks just smashed around that pistol. Looks good. Let's talk about pressure. Go ahead, holster up. So what are your thoughts on pressure? Some people say, you guys have heard the old, like hold it like you're holding a bird so it doesn't fly away, blah, blah, blah. What do you think? You've heard the, with the strong hand, shake like you're shaking a woman's hand. It should be firm, uh, but not too aggressive. And your support side hand should be like you're shaking a man's hand, which should be real tough. I feel like both hands should be squeezing pretty hard. That's my take on uh, grip strength and gripping the pistol. Rob Latham, who uh, nobody can take anything away from, his nickname's the great one for a reason. People ask him all the time, how hard do you hold the gun? And Rob says, I take this one and I take this one and I give it, give it my all with both of them. I'm paraphrasing him a little bit, but he takes his big old hands and just mashes down on it. This will evolve as your shooting goes on, but you need to start out with a good solid grip. If you're holding the gun weakly, you're not gonna be able to control it very well or get follow-up shots. I agree. Uh, you'll notice for some of you guys, when you guys are shooting, uh, they call it milking. So when you squeeze a round off, the gun goes up, you have to re-grip and come back down on it. If you're doing that, you gotta work on your grip. Yeah, if you watch any of the videos and you'll see us shooting here in a minute, as the gun goes off, our hands don't move. You'll see some movement here, but none of this stuff's moving around. We're not repositioning, we're not repositioning and moving our hands about as we go on. One more thing to add to all of this, and the reason that we're doing this video is this is stuff you need to analyze every time you're shooting. If you go look at your target after a shooting session and the group's this wide, something isn't right. And you need to be able to have a metric with which to look at to say, what am I doing? How do I adjust that? Where's my problem coming from? This grip is one of the biggest things. You can have a really crummy trigger press in a good grip and be okay. You can't do it the other way around. You can't have a crummy grip and a good trigger press. Nothing will work. The grip is so important because once you put your hand on your gun to come out of the holster, there's not a lot of changes that you can make, especially when time is of the essence from a fighting scenario. We call this the master grip. This is not something that's new to us or is, is our phrase. This is something that's been around forever. And the reason it's called the master grip is from the time that you impact the gun, that is how your hand is locked on it. There may be a little bit of movement during reloading, but Sang will demo that. He's got the cert gun on here. And you'll notice when his hand impacts the weapon, he is up high and tight like we showed you. Go ahead and draw now. You'll notice nothing changed there. Everything was static from the time he placed his hand on there. So as you are building your grip, you need to learn some index points on your body. The other thing that's important about this master grip, Singh's gonna demo this again, you watch that again, nice and smooth, comes out of the holster, he rotates out, his hands join up, he has that solid, solid grip. Now if he wants to manipulate the magazine, the cert is totally inert. You'll notice again, if we look in close at that right hand of his, not much is changing in how that gun, or that hand impacts the gun. This is one of the reasons we will talk about how small guns are not easy to shoot, because you have to keep manipulating that hand to make things happen, like allowing the magazine to get into the mag well. So let's talk about how we get a magazine into the gun. Saying, just demo it in and out a few times, just so people get the gist. This is something that you see people willy-nilly do. 
Hold the mag wrong now. Now look at this, how he's doing this. Not only is he holding it where it's not, doesn't have a good grip on it, but he's also trying to line two things up that are, that are out in front of him like that. You hear people say, bring the gun into your work zone or workspace, call it whatever you want, but bring it in where it's up so you can actually see what's happening and can make those two connections. You notice when he holds it correctly, he's using his index finger, which is coincidentally indexing into the magwell. About a bunch of guys talk about driving your index finger to the uh, small of your pinky finger or the edge of the magwell so that you can do this without much sight. Right now we're talking about fundamentals and this is a main fundamental. If you're on the range and we see people, how they load, you learn a lot real quick about how much they dry fire and how much they practice. Work this movement very slowly, very methodically, so that you get that mechanic down. We're not talking right now under the context of defensive shooting, but all of this stuff becomes applicable later. We want you to learn at a foundational, subconscious level so you can repeat this stuff. Show us a few more times, Sang. Nice and smooth, nothing's herky-jerky. Now this is the same if he's loading quickly or if he's loading from a bench or out of his holster first thing in the morning or after a, a weapons clearing drill or something of that nature. It's pretty much always gonna be the same. Even if Sang laid on his back right now or got on his knees, this is gonna just continue the same way. So you practice this until it's a subconscious level. You'll hear us say over and over again, every time you touch your gun, be mindful of what you're doing because you're programming your subconscious. Good or bad, you're programming it. What do you got to add to that? You, you hit all the points. Like anything else, you just gotta practice until it's natural. I mean, when you're not thinking about it, you don't even need to look, you just know where to go. Makes sense to me. All right, so you've got your grip, you understand how to hold the pistol. We're gonna show you how to get that gun up and working, how to load it properly. This is something, like we said, you want to ingrain at a subconscious level. So saying now we're working with a real gun, no longer the cert gun. Go ahead and demo that out. Look pretty easy, right? There are some very methodical movements and there's a reason that we do them over and over again. So we'll have you clear that out okay. and we'll show everybody now what, the what and the why. And we're running with dummy rounds in the gun right now, which means that they're totally inert. All right, so go ahead, let's get that gun out. He's got his master grip, he's got it out in front of him. There's a reason Sang does that quick press. He's ingrained in himself that when that gun comes out of the holster, it comes out into his sight line. So, he's inserted the mag. He gave a good, firm smack. He held it with his index finger in the correct position, which is here, right? Walked it into the mag well. So we say seat, lock, and tug. So you heard it click, you, you saw him seat it, he used his palm, and then you give it a tug. This is what we call an administrative load. He's loading when he decides there's no speed or anything of that nature involved. So he tugged it to make sure it's in there. Now he's gonna action the slide. When he did that, you noticed he didn't ride it forward. He gave a, gave a sharp uh, drawback on the slide and he let the spring slam it home. If you're not careful about that, you can actually cause a malfunction. His gun's probably really oiled so it won't do it. But so, some guns, you will not see the action close up. So it'll be out of battery, it looks something like this. So let the slide slam home. So the gun is loaded, you decided you want to unload it. Here's how this goes. He positions his thumb on the release. Every gun's different, we're working with a Glock today. He let the mag fall away. This is an administrative process now, we're not unloading under duress. He, otherwise we would have just let that magazine drop. So he stored that on his body, he's still got his good master grip, his finger is still off the trigger. You notice that? Now, how do we get that round out of the chamber, Sang? So when we do this, we like to do cycle, cycle, cycle. And we'll even say it aloud. Who cares if anybody's uh, paying attention? Cycle, cycle, cycle. Cycle, cycle, cycle. He's gonna lock the slide back. He can now look. He's now gonna look away. 
The reason he's doing that is this forces you to break bad habit where you're just like, it's unloaded, whatever. You look away, you're breaking your focus for a moment. He's gonna look one more time. He's gonna even take his finger if he needs to and feel in there to make sure it's unloaded. Now we know the gun is cleared out. We're not gonna say it's safe, but it's cleared out. Now from this point, you can do whatever you need to do. Come back to your holster, store it, do whatever. Always mining the muzzle, always keeping your finger off the trigger till you're ready to shoot. One of the reasons that you hear us talk so much about having a tool that's a fighting implement is especially if you have weaker hands, arthritis, smaller hands, and you just can't grab onto this thing. This is why slide serrations in certain parts of the gun are there for a reason. They help you grab onto it, or if you have wet or, God forbid, bloody hands. Show us the two ways, you don't need to cycle the gun, but show us the two ways that we grab onto it. So people call that the slingshot method, and then the overhand method where he's gonna come over the top. This a lot of times allows more grip pressure. So if you have a problem cycling your gun, if you've got a small like little pocket 380 or nine millimeter, that's a lot of spring pressure. A lot of guys go out and buy those for their wives and then the women come to the range and they can't grab that thing and they're jerking it trying to get it to move. So this may be a better option for you. The other thing you can do is push away as you pull. So you're not only using this hand, you're using that hand. Clamp down and it's kind of this motion. One thing I want to add to this, uh, Dave Spaulding pointed this out, is sometimes people come over the top to rack that slide, they want to either do it so forcefully or, or so aggressively that their hand comes way back here and then they got to come all the way back to get that grip. All you got to do is bring it to the stopping point and let go. That's it. You're just letting go and letting the slide do its job. All right, so we've talked about how to grip the gun. We definitely keep bringing up safety to you, which should be a clue to you. We just talked about how to load and unload. Now I want you guys to pay attention from this point to the end of the video because you're gonna see that grip, that load, that unload, and some of that safety stuff happen throughout the video. So I want you to see it and be like, oh, that's what the guys are talking about. Follow? So here we go. Now we're gonna actually load the gun up with dummies once more time and Sang is gonna show us how we work the trigger. This is the heart of the beast, as Masad Ayub calls it. If you can master how that trigger works, and learn to work it without moving the muzzle around, you're gonna become a much more skilled shooter much faster than if you're thinking about the wrong thing. Question comes up a lot about finger placement. The thing about finger placement, while most folks say to try to use the center of the pad, this is all contingent upon how big your finger is in relationship to the size of the frame. If you have a very small hand and I tell you to place a certain part of your finger on there, you're gonna have to come all the way out into the gun. Show us what you were just doing. Sang's got good sized hands, so that's not the case, but if he had smaller hands, to do that, he would have to rotate his hand. We don't wanna do that. A lot of folks push towards the seven o'clock, so if you're aiming at the bullseye, they're hitting down here. And the reason that that happens is as they're squeezing, they're using their hand and muscles to pull the gun down and towards that seven o'clock. So there's a lot of mental focus needs to take place here, just thinking about keeping everything smooth. So Sang's gonna show us that trigger press. He's gonna keep his weak hand off the gun just so you guys can see. Now you're gonna see him reset the trigger. He's coming forward just to the reset point. Break and reset. Very nice, very nice. You're noticing there's not a lot of movement here. You're not seeing things flexing and loosening. Just a nice, smooth, straight back press. Here's what we see a lot of people doing that you don't want to do working the trigger. I think I see the target, I think I see the target. Ugh! I think I see the target, I think I see the target. This is the stuff that's gonna cause you all kinds of frustration because you're gonna be getting big wide shot groups and not knowing what's happening. You need to isolate your issues and work on them one at a time. Good grip, good press. Next, we're gonna talk about how to align these sights. We're talking about sight alignment, often misunderstood, but not hard once you get the fundamentals, it makes perfect sense, and then from there on out, you can train correctly when you're out on the range. We've got a standard sight picture here, saying was so kind to bring out, very similar to what's on most combative style weapons. One of the things that we see off the bat that new students have a problem with is how do they align this thing? It's kind of funky, they don't know what to look at. We say equal height and equal light, equal Light means each side, you're centered up. So front sight post, rear sight, 
you're going to center them up in the target. Not left or right, not up or down, equal light. Light refers to left and right or windage, equal height, which is elevation. Going to be straight across. And this is going to be pretty indicative of almost every uh, standard sight you're going to see on a pistol or a rifle. Next thing that we're going to look at is how do you line that up on the target? For some reason, many manufacturers of, of training materials show sight pictures like this. Sang calls that the, the lollipop. And what happens is if you line up like that and discharge the weapon, the round is going to hit somewhere about here. Why? Because the bore is below the sights. So if you want to hit that, you need to actually obscure it with your sight. And this is all dependent on distance and the size of target. But so if you start out correctly teaching yourself these things, you're going to figure out real quick. What do you look at when you're sighting the, the pistol? Front sight is what most everybody says. This is uh, basic stuff so to build foundation, your foundation off of. That's your intended target, rear sight, front sight. You've got equal height, equal light. Place the front blade over your intended target, and this is what you're focusing on. The target's gonna become obscured, and your front sight is gonna come into clear, concise focus. You gotta keep that in mind. You'll hear some of the old timers say, front sight press, and that should be your mantra, especially as you're learning, front sight press. You need to be able to break that trigger to the rear while the sights are on the target. At the time that that breaks, that's where the bullet's going. If you can do that, man, you're good to go. And that's the problem most people have. So talking now how to shoot the gun. Let's look at a good, smooth trigger press. I don't know how well you can zoom in here on that trigger, but that's where the magic's about to happen. If you watch the muzzle as Sang breaks the shot, not a lot's happening, and that's good. If you guys are dry firing and you're seeing a bunch of stuff jumping around, you're moving too much. And this sounds maybe a little uh, simple, oversimplified, but that's really what it is. You need to concentrate on what you're doing and be able to keep that muzzle still while the shot breaks. Something to think about. Uh, as he's pushing that trigger back, there's different ways to think about it. Some folks imagine a straight line from the trigger to their eye, and you are pulling that trigger on that straight line towards your dominant eye. That's one way to think about it. Something else to add to this, trigger in this Glock is about six or seven pounds of pressure to break it. If you're applying, say, 15 pounds of pressure, where's that other six, seven, eight pounds going after the trigger breaks? It's somewhere into the frame. So now, saying, go ahead and give me a good hard press. You saw what happened there. Now, all of those muscles are tensing up. Let's recycle and do it one more time. Watch the muzzle. That's why a lot of shooters will analyze a target and they keep shooting low as they're squeezing these muscles call this interlimb response or interlimb grasp, sympathetic grasp. These other fingers are tightening as this index finger is moving. This sounds really oversimplified, but you re really need to focus on moving this without moving the rest of these fingers, which is, again, we told you this stuff all links together, which is why this grip is so important. If you got a good hold on the gun, that trigger press is going to be a lot easier. So now we're gonna put some live rounds in this thing and we're gonna show you what that looks like. All right, so the next thing we're gonna look at here is how to actually press the trigger to get hits. So saying he's gonna go through his loading process. See that good master grip, he presses out. Got a good index on the mag, seat lock tug. It's gonna come over the top. Notice the slide slam forcefully home. He just did a chamber check. And now we're in good condition. Little process that he just went through there was replenishing his mag so that he's ready to go. So he's now joined up. He's got a good, firm, two-handed grip, just like we showed you. Everything is being applied inward. He's going to press out. He's going to find his sights. He's going to decide to shoot when his sights are on target. Watch the muzzle of the gun as it recoils. Go ahead now and just shoot maybe five rounds in a slow cadence so that we can see that process of resetting and re-engaging the trigger. You hear the reset? Now, 
what Sang's going to show you is taking the slack out of that trigger to come up to that wall that we talk about. So the, if you can see right here, that small amount of movement is what you call a slack. So you're going to think to yourself, slack out, the trigger is going to come to that breaking point, and that's where you need to really be careful. You're going to push smoothly through that breaking point. So here's something that, as you're going through this, you can work through in your head. Get your grip saying, gun comes out, do I like my grip? Does saying like his grip? Saying likes his grip. Do I have my target? I have my target. Fingers on the trigger, do I like where my finger's at on the trigger? I do. Now, you kind of juggle a few things. Where's the sights? Grip is good. Start to take the slack out, and the shot's gonna break when he likes it. Very nice. I'm gonna have Sang holster up for a minute. He's actually running some sights that we're testing, but I want you guys to see the target, just so you can see where we're at. We're at about six yards here. And we've got a, a nice couple inch group there. Taking a look at the target, saying he's got a couple inch group. He's not trying for supreme accuracy. They're, this is more than adequate for what we're talking about. If he wanted to, he could take his time and really tighten that up. So the whole cycle here, we've got a loaded pistol on board in his uh, concealment holster here. You're gonna see him press out. He joins up, he's got that good master grip. He finds the target, he finds his sights. Slack out, press. He's now reset, he's back on target. Notice he's not snatching the gun in to scan and look around. He's making sure he hit whatever he was aiming at. He's now tracked to the ground. We've got a whole video on that if you wanna check that out. Now he's made the decision he's gonna come back in. You guys notice the entire time the muzzle is pointed towards the target. On an indoor range, that's good etiquette. Don't be pointing it at the floor, don't be pointing it at the ceiling on an indoor range. Down is usually a good thing. On an outdoor range, up, still not a good thing. You can go over a berm. Down and up have their purpose, but in the context of this, at the target. We're talking about threats right now. So Sang's gonna run a few rounds here with kind of a crummy grip where he's holding it like we see a lot of folks shooting. If you're holding the gun like this, you should, uh, this should be some food for thought for you. So he's got the old TJ Hooker cup and saucer grip. Just run five shots. You see there's a lot of movement. Now, get your master grip back where you're locked in. Watch the way the gun tracks. A lot flatter, a lot smoother, and actually with a good solid foundation, a lot of the energy that the gun is using to close itself back up is sent using to send the slide forward rather than allowing the gun to tip around. So it makes the gun operate better. What do you got to add? That's it, just practice, practice, practice. Getting the grip here, coming out, acquiring the sights. The finger, making sure it's on there when it needs to and not when it's not. Coming back, going slow with it. If you go fast, the most dangerous part is if you can't control this and you're carrying appendix, you don't want to do that. You have a, you have a mishap over here, I don't know what to tell you, guy. Um, so just dry fire and practice. Finger goes on, if it needs to go on, it's off when it's coming back. This is how, it, uh, this is how we kind of teach it. If you're gonna go out to engage the target, as you're going on or you're going out to engage, finger goes on. When you're done, your finger comes off. So it's on, when it's, anytime it's coming back, it's off unless you're engaging as you're coming back. Makes sense. Hey, if you've been watching our videos and you're wondering where the hell did they get those cool shirts, give us a call, send us an email, send me a direct message, tell you how to get one. 25 bucks a piece, we'll send one right to your door. I'll even include a couple of these cool carry trainer stickers that you can put on your range box or truck, wherever you want. So a big issue new shooters have is what do I do with my thumbs? And here's why this comes up. Sang's gonna work the slide and I'm gonna kind of screw around with the uh, grip here. Go ahead. So just imagine the gun went off. Because of my hand placement, I just actuated erroneously the slide stop. 
for what it's designed to do, it stops the slide. So you're in mid firing sequence and all of a sudden the slide stops back. If that's ever happened to you, pay attention. On the other hand, the other time that this becomes important is when you want your slide to lock back. So these magazines are designed to push the slide stop up as the follower comes all the way to the top of the magazine when it's empty, thus telling you your gun's empty, thus allowing you to make a quicker reload than with the slide forward. So if I am shooting and I have reached the last bullet, go ahead saying actuate the slide, that's what should happen so I can dump the magazine and retrieve a new one and keep going. Here's what happens though if you're riding the slide stop. So the magazine's empty, oh, and then I keep going, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, and then I go to retrieve my magazine and realize that I have been riding the slide stop lever. So saying, what do I do? Every time I grab the gun, this is what we hear all the time, I keep m messing up the slide stop. Either I'm pushing it up when I don't want to or I'm holding it down when I don't want to. So what, what do I do with my thumbs? Do I rub them on the frame or do I go? No, so this is a problem that shows up all the time. Easy fix. We take a little marker and we make a little smiley face over here. This is one of your buddies. But the thing is, your buddy, he's been annoying you all day, so you don't want to see him anymore. So we're gonna just slide our thumb over. So when you're looking down, if you do see your friend doing something wrong, not doing something wrong, but this is a reminder for you to push your thumb over here. We're not gonna put a lot of pressure. We don't want to kill our friend. We're just trying to not see him anymore. So we're gonna do, cover him just like that. Oh, wow, so now when the slide moves back and forth, I'm not pushing on the slide stop lever. Isn't that easy? I think that's a great way of describing it there. So now as the gun does what it's gotta do, that slide stop lever can do what it's designed to do, either be up or be down at the opportune time instead of the inopportune time. Quick tip. All right, a question we get a lot is revolvers. Because we spend most of our time training people that carry, I'm gonna look at a gun that's carried quite often, the Smith & Wesson J-Frame. This one's in 38 Special, very, very common. These have been around forever. Something you gotta keep in mind with a revolver, especially a little guy like this, is an extremely short sight radius. People do tend to think that these are inaccurate weapons, and they're not. We've got a video up on Instagram and YouTube where we're making headshots pretty quickly at uh, 10 yards. So these things will get the job done if you know what you're doing. All of the fundamentals of marksmanship that we've been teaching you in this video still stay the same. You need a good grip, you need a good smooth trigger press, and you're gonna, have, gonna need to have those sights aligned on target. The problem with these little guys is, is there's just so little to hold on to. So I'm not gonna be able to use that exact same grip as I showed you and saying showed you with the larger framed guns. So what you're gonna see is more of a balled up hand. I'm still having my hand up high. You need to be cautious with a wheel gun. This area here uh, around the front of the cylinder, the cone it's called, you get a lot of hot escaping gas in this area. If you have your hand, especially in larger caliber uh, revolvers like a 44, 45 Colt, things like that, you've got a ton of hot gas. It not only can cut you, it can damn near cut a finger off. A little 38's not as big a deal, but don't develop that habit. Keep your fingers away from this area. So you still need to be up high and tight. You still want to have that good firm grip. And you're going to need to apply a lot of that inward pressure where you're using your shoulders, your pecs, and your back muscles. These guns will get the job done as far as accuracy is concerned, but now with a 1 in 7 eighths inch barrel, minutia as far as movements is concerned really can push this thing off target. Just the slightest deviation with that short barrel can move your, your impact point inches, even at close distance. So you're really gonna have to pay attention to what's happening. How do you load these things? Let's take a look. We're not gonna get into a speed loader or anything like that today, only because we're working on the fundamentals. Most every revolver has a mechanism to release the cylinder. That's what this is called here where the cartridges are kept. Always minding the muzzle, open that cylinder up. This is a good way to hold it while loading it. Not only can I control it, but I can rotate the cylinder to load the ammo.
Now from that position, as you pull your fingers out, gravity is going to help you halfway. You push that sucker home and this gun is ready to go. This is a double action only. It's got a shrouded hammer, so all I get is that double action. My hands are going to join up. We're going to shoot the head. Notice where my hands are at. So now, to get rid of those, turn it over, give it a smack, clear it out. We can either reload or we can close it up and do what we got to do. I'm going to load that up and try that one more time. As you can see, these guns will get the job done. That's about a five inch group at about five yards here on rubber dummy. And five rounds out of the 38, these are not uh, weakly loaded rounds. It smarts the hand a little bit. But if you've got that good grip, you can see the job will get done. Many times people own these guns and they don't fully understand marksmanship. So they take it out to the range and they can't hit the broad side of the barn and they just assume that these things are only meant for contact distance. Well, clearly that's not the point or the case. So now we're going to look at a double single, double single action. This would be like a SIG or the Beretta or any other gun with this type of, of mechanism. Why is it called a double single? Well, you can operate the hammer from two different methods, double action in one movement the trigger actuates the hammer, cocking it, and releases it, all in one movement. Single action, the hammer is cocked, and the trigger breaks the sear from the cocked position. A weapon like this is usually carried in this position, either on safe or in this mode. This particular Beretta does not have a safety. It only has a decocking lever, so with you folks with the SIGs, and uh, regular 92s will also have the choice of a safety selector. So this gun would be carried in this position. If you were to come out of a holster, you would engage from here. After the gun fired, you would then be in single action. This is the challenge with this type of gun, is now you need to learn two trigger pulls. It can be done. Some of the best shooters in the world shoot this type of weapon. Just go look at the guys for factory Beretta's team or uh, SIG's team and they're shooting double singles and you can do amazing things with it. Uh, what's the benefit? This is a big heavy steel gun. These, these double singles have a lot of weight behind them which means a recoil is uh, very light. What else? That single action, boy is it sweet after shooting plastic guns. If you, uh, you have a gun like this in that single action mode and you're used to shooting a Glock or an M&P, that is just silky, silky smooth. What is there you got to think about in addition to the, the striker fired? So there's a reason those striker fired pistols are so widely used. They're just so darn easy. You got another step or two you got to add into this. So with this particular weapon, if you're loaded up and you want to come back to the holster, especially after shooting, if you're in this position, you need to depress the, the decock lever. If you've got a safety, you engage the safety at that point and then safely come back to the holster. Notice where my thumb is. Can you zoom in on that, Drew? So when you've got an exposed hammer like this, it is a great habit to hold that hammer down as you come back to the holster. You're not drawing like this, but you're holstering up like that. Your draw is still that good master grip, but after you're done shooting, holding that hammer in that position is another added safety feature of letting you know this gun is not gonna go off. I am holding the hammer forward. Why do we do that? Well, as we all know, holstering is where most accidents happen. If you were to accidentally come into the holster and something got a hold of that trigger, like some clothing or some debris, and you started actuating it, having your finger there not only impedes it from moving, but it tells you, hey, something's going on here. So with these double singles, there's a trade-off for that sweet single action trigger. You've now got to deal with this hammer. And we're not talking about a 1911, we're talking about these double singles where you can actually decock this thing. You're gonna bring your thumb to the back position here to decock. When doing that, you are indexing that hammer against the side of your thumb. I can now feel, even with my eyes closed, that that hammer is in the rear position. I know, whoops, decock. 
Now when I come back up, everything feels as it should be. Just like the other guns, you need to build repetition. This is why we don't want you guys jumping from gun to gun to gun. You need to be one with the tool. This is how you do it. We're gonna load this baby up. So the loading process is just the same as it was with the other firearm we were using earlier, the striker fire. You're gonna load. Same fashion, I'm giving a tug to that magazine and now I have a choice. Do I wanna come over the top or do I want a slingshot? From this position, I think I'm gonna come over the top. I like that. I let that slide go forcefully home. Now I've got another choice. From this position, I can come out and fire in that single action mode. But I know if I'm gonna carry this weapon, I'm gonna be carrying it in double action mode. So I'm not gonna cheat myself out of that learning lesson with the double action. So you're gonna see, we're gonna press out the first shot. You guys watch that hammer. See that hammer moving? You watch that hammer come back. Now where is it? It's in that rear position. So now, if I wanted to work on double action, I could decock and just work on that double action, or I could enjoy the sweet, smooth, silkiness of that single. We're gonna do that another time for you. So as we come out on the target, we've got that long double action pull. After that, we now get to enjoy the benefits of that single action. This thing is too hard to not enjoy. I'm gonna do that one more time. So just like our plastic gun, we've got our magazine in a good index position. Come out of our mag holder. We insert, we give a good tug, seat lock tug. I'm gonna come over the top or I can slingshot. I let the slide slam forcefully home. With this double single, I don't wanna rob myself of the ability to practice the double action pull. So I'm gonna decock as I start this drill. So I can come out, you're gonna watch that hammer come back. As that hammer comes back off that first shot, now I get to enjoy the benefits of a gun like this. I've got that sweet, sweet single action trigger pull. Look at that. Very, very easy. And this is a tuned up gun, so it's even better. Now comes the part where you gotta pay attention. If you go back to the holster like this, that is not safe. We got a very light trigger pull. You gotta make sure you decock. So our thumb comes back. We swipe the decocker, right? I'm now gonna come up over the top of the hammer and I can come back to my holster position. Make sure when you're working with these double singles that you understand how all these moving parts work and why. There's a benefit to them and there's some drawbacks and that drawback is that you've got more stuff that you need to add into your data bank. Be careful. Uh. This is Mickey Shook with CarryTrainer.com. I appreciate you watching. Subscribe, pass this stuff on to your friends. If you guys have any questions on any of this or there's something that's been puzzling you, send us an email. We'd love to answer. Maybe we'll do a video on it. Thanks. Understand why that happened. Don't make fun if you don't understand. You got anything to add to that? No. Good. Yeah, that's it. Man of many, many words saying. Uh, really, is all. Nah. What's the point you want to get a clause? How to like, shoot a gun? Body. Is this safe? Like that? Put that on the video? If he sees his buddy, I'm too, too far over. Oh, right, right. over. <laughs> I can't see. I'm over here. I wondered why you were yeah. over there. I feel like I went to the dentist. You got anything to add to that? Nope. He never has anything to add either. I'm good, or he just doesn't when want. When he's talk. wrong, I'll point it out. <laughs> uh oh. Okay.
I can't see the target. I literally, I literally cannot see the gun. 